Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Unfiltered. Pastor David, welcome back home. This is really our first Unfiltered as we've been back. Yeah. And so uh, it's been an adjustment, but it's been, it, it, honestly, it was a great trip. And this is just a, a, a plug that next year our church is planning to go back and would really, really recommend that you would at least pray about going. It's an amazing trip. But we're not here to talk about Israel. No. Uh, I wanted to ask you a question in regards to recent movements. Now, uh, we, we spoke particularly about one previously, and I came across another just recently and, and was taken back a little bit by the format of it, very similar to the previous movement that we have been spoken about, speaking about. But my, my question to you, Pastor, is what is the danger in emotionalism, sensationalism through worship uh, and through the gifts of the Spirit. Now, and the reason why I'm using quotes is because it can be it can be presented as this. And there's such a desire from the young people that there can be a tendency to gravitate to it and grasp it, and it's the Word of God. And I rem and I know Jesus says uh, that the Spirit will not glorify Himself, but would always glorify Jesus. He points mm -hmm. to Jesus. So you see this quote-unquote, hyper-sensationalism, hyper-emotionalism, mixed with worship, is that a dangerous place to well, be? Well, it always is. Whenever the flesh is, is mixed with the, uh, the genuine movement of the Spirit, whenever the flesh takes over or begins to control, then obviously that will always be something wrong and something that leads to simply an expression of, of carnality. You know, um, there's a hunger, John, and we know this, that that, that p many people have. I think that there are many people who are, uh, are younger, younger people who desire to have an experience with God. I think that the recent uh, reports of the Asbury uh, revival that we've looked at in the past and, and also the, uh, the movie, The Jesus Revolution, mm -hmm. I, I think that has worked together to spark uh, a greater interest and maybe even to provoke a greater hunger for God to move. And uh, that's, uh, to me, that's a very important thing. I, of course, the body, <laughs> the body of Christ is, um, we're intended by God to be, to be uh, filled with His Spirit, it, it, we're even commanded. The Scripture says, and be ye filled with the Spirit. That's a command, that's not a suggestion or a comment that is made that would be like, gosh, wouldn't it be nice? It's, it's a command, be filled, to be continuously and continually filled by the Spirit, right? So any genuine believer in Christ wants God to move in them. Now the question is, is how does that happen? How, how do we know when it's God? How do, we, how do we know when it's our flesh? You know, we're not to despise prophecy. Paul says, but at the same time, in the same sentence, basically says, but test all things and hold fast to that which is, is good, which is true, which is real. It, it, hold fast to those things, right? How do you test those things? Well, you prove those things, you test those things by Scripture. Jesus in Mark chapter 16 had said around verse 17, uh, these signs shall follow those who believe. But what I see today, and I've seen it really since I first got saved and my eyes are spiritually open, from the beginning, I mean for 52 years as a Christian and as someone who got saved in that beautiful revolution, that Jesus movement, you know, back in 1970, I've been around long, a long time, John. I've been part of early the early movement of the Spirit where we would sit in a house and we would have prayer and worship and and the Holy Spirit would move upon us. And, and I've seen the early expressions of the gifts of the Holy Spirit in young believers. I was there. I was part of that. I experienced those things. You know, today people say, well, you, you're old. What do you know? Well, you know, that's, that's the tendency of youth. Youth always knows more than the adults, always. But it's interesting to me that the Bible never teaches the young to lead the older. <laughs> and it doesn't. It doesn't say, you elders follow the lead of the younger. It doesn't. But it does say that we're to respect our elders and uh, show them the kind of honor, especially if they labor at the word and doctrine. 
So that's just an expression of immaturity, an expression of, of youthfulness and a lack of understanding of Scripture that you hear these things. So when somebody like me says, well, you need to be aware of the, the various things that come along very often with such things as the Asbury Revival mm -hmm. or, you know, uh, the various movements that are starting today where worship is the center of all things and not the Word of God. Well, Jesus said we, that, that God is spirit and, and that we are to worship in spirit and in truth, you know. And so how can I worship in both spirit and truth? Well, truth is supposed to be what directs my spiritual worship. And so, you know, in the early church, um, and I'll make this quick because I could really go a long time on this particular subject. In the early church, we have the example of the Corinthians. The Corinthians were a church that Paul said came behind in no gift. They were filled with the things of the Lord, and then they ex exercised those gifts and, and all. But he said what you're doing is you are manifesting those things out of order. He makes it very clear in 1 Corinthians 14, I believe around verse 40, that God is a God of order. He's not a God of confusion. Do all things decently, he said, and in order. Mm -hmm. And so, the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. You have the ability to actually express the things of the spirit without hyper-emotionalism. You don't have to tell people, you know, when I count to three, we all do this. And that's manipulation. That, that is not the Holy Spirit. When you have uh, someone, and I've heard that there, for example, there's uh, some kind of worship thing that's going on where the worship leader becomes really the pastor leader by directing everybody as to what they're supposed to do. At that point, anybody who reads their Bible ought to realize I'm being manipulated. This is not biblical leadership. What this is, is this is doing something, I'm being told to do something that they think I'm supposed to do. So my plead, I plead with you young people especially who are so hungry for the things of the Holy Spirit to be wise. Mm -hmm because you can be deceived. And, and, and if you're not reading the Word, I encourage you, read 1 Corinthians chapters 12, 13, and 14. That'll give you an idea of how the works of the Spirit are and how the, the, the Spirit moves in a very decent and orderly way. You know, uh, that's, that's something that's forgotten. And it's because people want all of God, but they don't want all of God's Word at the same time. And so, in, in saying, but this is my feeling. And, and it, I, I would encourage anybody, look at Jesus in the life of Christ because the Spirit was upon him and with, without measure, you know. He, he was one who was completely and absolutely filled with the Spirit. And yet, um, you never see him doing anything outrageous. You never see him screaming, you never see him swinging his fists around, you never see him rolling on the ground, you never see any of those excesses. I've seen a lot of that. Again, John, I, I've been a Christian a long time, man. I, I've been in a lot of places, in revivals, I've been in Pentecostal revivals, I've, I've been present in these things. And on the one hand, you don't want to be dried up, you, you want to have freshness. On the other hand, you don't want to blow up with, mm. with too much flesh and expression of what you think God is saying. You need to have a mixture of, of the Word and the Spirit so you can grow up. That's what we used to say. And so we, we need the Word of God. And so if, if somebody wants something of the Lord, then humility dictates that they should ask direction and advice of those whom God has placed as spiritual leaders in their lives who have a, an experience with the Spirit of God and, and know the ways of God and how this works within somebody's life and all. That's what, that's what you should do. Because when we first got saved, I was at Calvary Chapel. I would sit under the, the ministry, especially of a young man named Lonnie Frisbee. And he was a man who had a bit of an excess. Eventually, I, I felt it was a little bit out of, out of order. It, it was moving in that direction and all. And, and that's no condemnation on Lonnie at all. It's just that as I grew older, I began to realize some of the things that I was encouraged to do or believe were not necessarily scriptural. But at the same time, we had an openness to what God wanted to do. We're brand new Christians, John, but we wanted God to move in us. And, I, and I'm blessed to know that young people want the mm -hmm. same thing. So my final word would simply be this. 
Be very careful that you're not deceived into thinking something is of God because you feel good when you do it. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for that, Pastor. One last yes, thing. Yes, please. I'll say it like this. These signs shall follow mm -hmm. those who believe, not those who believe sure. shall follow these signs. Don't reverse that because we have people, and I know people, oh, you're a Calvary chapel, you quench the spirit. Um, whatever, whatever you think, I mean, that's up to you. But, no, we simply want the spirit to move decently and in order. Mm -hmm. And I'm totally open to the power of the Holy Spirit. We've seen God move in marvelous ways for all these years. So, you know, I may be old, but I don't know anywhere in Scripture that says I'm, I'm used up. Amen. I'm not used up yet. <laughs> Amen. And that's important to understand uh, because there is a desire for the young. We have the desire still, even as an older gentleman, and I can never speak for you, but I can know that there's a, still a desire to know more of God. And, uh, and a lot of it doesn't come, like you mentioned, doesn't come like this in the Bible, in the Word of God. I always remember it says, uh, I will exalt my word over my name. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think about that. And, and so, but what a blessed thing is that you have these young people that have this desire. Okay. They can seek God through the Word of God and have that experience through the Holy Spirit. Yes. That would be amazing. So, Pastor, thank you for sharing that. Uh, we have a big... Not this weekend, we have our services tomorrow, Wednesday evening, as you're taking us to Romans chapter 3. three. We're starting Romans, so it's been a rich study. I want to invite you guys to invite your friends and family to come out and join us. It's, it's been a good study and uh, very fruitful. And then around the corner we have our Good Friday services at 7 p.m. Well, on Wednesday of next week, and we'll make this quick because I know I'm going to lose people, but... On Wednesday of next week, I haven't even mentioned it or re-mentioned re it to you, we're going to have Holland Davis who's going to take us through a Passover because next Wednesday is Passover. Oh. And so I'm going to have Holland come and he's going to walk us through Christ in the Passover. That'll okay. be on Wednesday. The then, we have Wednesday. Good Friday, then we have a Good Friday. And then we have our Easter Sunday. A great opportunity to invite friends and family to come out and join us. And so we do look forward to having you join us. Again, Pastor David, thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow night, Wednesday evening, 7 p.m. in the chapel. God bless you guys. Amen.